All right, so here's the shot, and now let's begin tracking this at a very inhuman pace. Alright, so I finished all the tracking I need to do for this tutorial. Again, if you were tracking, please track more. Track all the detail you can if it is there. It'll only help you. Don't listen to what anybody said about having too many points too close together. That's nonsense. Put a lot of points. Make sure every point has the buddy. This point should have a buddy. Okay, that's my PSA done. Okay, so talking about constraints. We'll see how this goes. I don't know how well I'll be able to explain this in a way that makes sense to people, but I'm going to give it my best shot. So uh, constraints. Constraints is a way to tell a tracker, hey, you need to go here. If you have some geometry or a scan of this store, you could tell this tracker or if you or sorry, if you have a point on this wall and you could see this wall here in, in, in the scan, you could take a tracker onto this corner and actually tell it it needs to snap to that corner on the geometry. So constraints is just a fancy way to say that you can lock things in synthize to what to exactly what you want them to do. Okay, so let's let me actually just show what it is and then I'll try to explain it. Let's pretend I had a model and the model is of this floor. I don't really have a model, so I'm just going to make a big plane which is a grid which matches these tiles. So I'm going to hit F4, come over here, go to 3D, come over to the geometry, make a plane, and let's just drag out a plane. So I did not make that perfectly. So I'm going to go to scale and I'm going to just type in, I don't know what the scale of this is. I could have measured one of the tiles, but I didn't. So I'm going to go, uh, let's make it, um, I don't know, let's go 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters sure 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 okay so i guess that scale didn't matter because now i'm going to put a whole bunch of different divisions let's go let's just make sure that we have more than enough so we got a lot of tiles and let's see now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna roughly position my camera into place so i'm gonna go whole move and it, for some reason, it's not moving my geo. Usually, in 3D, whole effects meshes is on by default. Thankfully, it isn't. So let's move uh, this kind of in. Wow, this is hard to. There we go. Kind of there. And now let's rotate it. Okay, well, this doesn't have to be close at all. I just want to roughly see things. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take some of these trackers and actually tell them to stick to some of these quads. So let's turn off hole, go over to tracking. Uh, if I select a tracker, I want, to, I want to bring your attention over here. So seed and lock. We are actually going to add coordinates to the transforms right here and then we're going to tell synthize to lock to that position so if i take a tracker we're going to hit f3 and then i want to snap to camera right now just so i could see things lock which you can also hit l on your keyboard and things are looking a little bit messy because i see my grid and i see synthize's ground plane so i'm going to hit g which hides the ground plane also, the wireframe is a little bit dark because Synthize likes to light the wireframes. I'm going to right click, view, lit wireframes off. There we go. A lot easier to see. Okay, so now, oh, by the way, if you right click or click on pan 2D, you get this red border, which means that you're in a pan 2D mode. So you can move around as if you were in the camera view. So back to F3 and again, right click so you get into this view or click pan 2D. All right, so now... With a tracker selected, I want to place it onto one of these vertices. But how do I do that? I'm going to come down to the bottom left right here. You can see we have this window. Or sorry, this little toolbar. And I'm going to click place. So now that I've clicked that, if you left click anywhere, you'll see that there is a little triangle being dragged around. 
this triangle is gliding around your mesh right now. So if you let go, it's stuck to the mesh. If I click orbit, whoops, if I click orbit, and my, I have Maya style navigation, so I'm going to hit alt and click. You can see that I can orbit around that point and see that we have stuck it onto the mesh. I can hit place, and yeah, you can see that we can snap it around anywhere we want. And if you hit control while dragging it, you're going to snap it to the vertices. Much more precise and much quicker. So I'm going to hit lock and right click and drag so that we're back into pan 2D mode. Okay, so here we go. Um, it doesn't matter what face that I pick right now. I'm just going to start with whatever quad I feel like. Let's start with... Actually, I like the one that I'm on. <laughs> so I'm going to start with this one. Now we're going to take that tracker and stick it here. Uh, I could hit F2, select the tracker, and hit F3. And now I can see place is still on. I can click around this new constraint for that tracker. Hold Control snap it there. Uh, I could swap between these windows but I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna come up to layout and we're gonna switch from camera perspective or sorry camera and perspective. Now we got our two windows and we can very easily monitor both, si uh, both sides. So let's select this one to the right of that one. You see it has to go to the right side and hold control click there we go. Again make sure place stays on. So let's grab the fourth point. If you're going to work with constraints, uh, you best have more than three at least. So hold control click. There we go. So I have four. So let's see what happens. I'm going to hit F3. Let's see what happens if I solve with these four points constrained or locked. Actually, before I do that, real quick, now that I've place those trackers if you look off to the left side here with seed and lock under the tracker room you could see that we actually have uh, some coordinates now because we've placed the stuff and it's recorded here and now the trackers are set to lock point so since lock is on it's gonna listen to this if you don't want it to listen to this click this and go to unconstraint and then you're back to normal okay so now here's what we gotta do we gotta go to solver and you got to turn on constraint but here's the thing you don't have to if your solve has a nice decent free move you could hit go and this might look constrained let me let's give it a test right now i'm gonna hit go and look what it did it did a pretty good job at lining up this plane already so i took a, a square tile and then i constrained to it uh what you know is a uniform square to me in this case the quads and it just got the perspective correct uh, it's kinda correct you can see that not all the tiles are in line so if I keep playing you can see that yeah it's not perfect all around that is because we don't have constraint on so what it did synthize took your solve and without forcing any 3d points into a position it solved it and then it lined uh, it lined up as best as it could to your constraints again without forcing where it puts the 3d points but if we want to force this and make it perfect we turn on constraint solve and look what that did that looks awesome it forced the perspective and I am so proud uh, so that is the basics of constraining I hope I explained that well but we're not done yet so what's nice is that, oh, by the way, if we don't want Synthize to keep calculating from scratch each time, we're going to switch out of, out of automatic into refine. Oh, one more thing, too. Something I didn't do is I didn't turn on distortion. My camera has some pretty gnarly distortion, so we're going to turn that on. And yes, we're in refine, so we don't have to calc from nothing. And let's hit go. There we go. I got some distortion in there. If I look over here, yeah, you can see the tiles are now fitting much better. And my solve error went from 0.5 to 0.3. Okay, so now let's say we want to branch out and get some more accuracy going out further. Actually, this is pretty good. <laughs> That's actually really good. Um, I was just going to say, if things weren't working perfectly outwards here, you could take these points, hit F3, and again, uh, go into pan 2D mode, lock into your camera. 
you could take extra points, place, and then snap and, you know, constrain them to their corners. And if they have a little bit of drift, you know, when you constrain it and hit solve, it'll snap over. So I hit solve. So you look at that. It made it. Yeah, it did. It made it a little bit better. If we look out here, see, we brought these lines a little bit close, a little bit closer. So you can track more points out further if you feel that you have to and just keep constraining them. So the benefit of this is that now the whole scene has a perfect orientation to this room. So if I make a wall, let's go to plane and we'll put a wall, oh, we'll get the magic wand, place a wall right here, drag it out to the side. So look at the perspective on the wall, it's pretty good. And yeah, you can get a pretty nice model off of this now. And if we needed to scale it, uh, I would actually prefer to, I always scale things outside of Synthize, I do it in Maya. Like I put a locator distance tool in between faces if I wanted to scale these tiles. But you could go whole move and whoop, right click 3D whole effects meshes and try to do it like that. But again, or you can do some math and, you know, actually create a plane at the correct scale in centimeters or whatever your units are and also give it the respectable amount of uh, divisions. So now that we've gone through point constraints in a in its simplest possible form, um, hope you enjoy the video. Later.